set. Mayor and I have just come from visiting with the families of our two murdered police officers. It's a time of great emotion, of great passion. And so please bear with us as we try to bring some sense to the madness that occurred this afternoon in the streets of Brooklyn. It's sometimes difficult to find the words to speak to events like those that occurred today, to try to make sense of them, but we'll try. Today, two of New York's finest were shot and killed with no warning, no provocation. They were quite simply assassinated, targeted for their uniform and for the responsibility they embraced to keep the people of this city safe. At approximately 2.47 p.m. today, Police Officer Wenjian Liu and Police Officer Rafael Ramos were assigned to a critical response vehicle, CRBs as we refer to them, in the confines of the 7-9 precinct. While CRV is traditionally used for counterterrorism operations, this past May, we also assigned some vehicles to housing developments throughout the city, developments that had seen an increase in violence in the early part of the year, like the Tompkins houses where the officers were stationed. While sitting in a mocked NYPD police car in full uniform, both were ambushed and murdered in front of 98 Tompkins Avenue in the Bedford-Stuyvesant area of Brooklyn, New York City. Both officers are assigned to the 8-4 precinct, but were posted at this location as part of a department crime reduction strategy to address complaints of violence in the area of the housing developments in that area. Officer Ramos was in the driver's seat, and Officer Liu was in the front passenger seat beside him. According to witness statements, the suspect, who has been identified as 28-year-old Ismail Brinsley, walked up to the police car. He took a shooting stance on the passenger side and fired the weapon, his weapon several times through the front passenger window, striking both officers in the head. Officer Lou and Officer Ramos never had the opportunity to draw their weapons they may never have actually even seen their assailant, their murderer. Other officers who were also assigned to the CIV post immediately pursued Brinsley southbound on Tompkins Avenue. Brinsley then turned west, westbound on Myrtle Avenue and fled into the Myrtle Avenue and Willoughby Street, the G-Train subway station. He proceeded down the stairs onto the westbound subway platform. While on the platform, Brinsley shot himself in the head, took his own life. A silver semi-automatic Taurus firearm was recovered on the subway platform near the suspect's body. Officers Lou and Ramos were transported here to Woodhill, Woodhull Hospital. Despite every effort to save their lives, both officers tragically succumbed to their injuries. On behalf of the New York City Police Department, I extend my deepest condolences to Lou and the Ramos families and the families within the NYPD. Both officers paid the ultimate sacrifice today while protecting the communities they serve. The suspect was transported to Brooklyn Hospital where he was pronounced dead. We are currently continuing to investigate this incident I want to thank at this time Dr. Baju and his trauma staff for their valiant efforts, but unsuccessful efforts, to resuscitate our officers. Some background information relative to the events leading up to the murder of our two officers today. At approximately 5.45 this morning in Baltimore County, Maryland, a female believed to be Brinsley's former girlfriend was shot and seriously wounded by Brinsley at her residence. Baltimore County detectives later received information from the victim's mother that Brinsley was posting on the victim's Instagram account. 
Further information was developed indicating that Brinsley may have had associations with the East Flatbush area of Brooklyn. At approximately 2.45 this afternoon, Baltimore authorities sent a fax, a warning flyer, a wanted flyer to the NYPD and other agencies. Tragically, this was essentially at the same time as our officers were being ambushed and murdered by Brinsley. Tragically, too, this is not the first time this department has seen such violence. Seven times since 1972, we have seen partners murdered together, often in incidents such as this, mindless assassinations without warning. Our officers know this from the memorial walls on our precincts and headquarters and from the stories they hand down. Nevertheless, they do what we expect of them. They grieve, they mourn, but then they go out onto the streets of the city and work to keep it safe every day and every night. We have never and never will forget that mission. We will never forget the two young men who lost their lives today. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Our city is in mourning. Our hearts are heavy. We lost two good men who devoted their lives to protecting all of us. Officer Ramos, Officer Liu died in the line of duty, protecting the city they loved. Our hearts go out to their families, to their comrades in arms at the 8-4 precinct, to the larger family of the NYPD. We honor the EMTs, the doctors, the nurses, everyone at Woodhull who tried valiantly to save their lives and couldn't. I want to thank everyone who came here today to support these families that are in such pain right now. All the leadership of the NYPD, the elected officials are here. I thank them for coming here in solidarity with these grieving families and our police department. Although we are still learning the details, it's clear that this was an assassination. That these officers were shot execution style, a particularly despicable act which goes at the very heart of our society and our democracy when a police officer is murdered it tears at the foundation of our society. It is an attack on all of us. It's an attack on everything we hold dear. We depend on our police to protect us against forces of criminality and evil. They are a foundation of our society, and when they are attacked, it is an attack on the very concept of decency. Therefore, every New Yorker should feel they, too, were attacked. Our entire city was attacked by this heinous individual. Even though the assailant took his own life, we'll be vigilant for any information about anyone else who might be involved. And this is a point to make clear to all my fellow New Yorkers, that any time anyone has information that there might be an attack on our police, there might be an act of violence directed at any police officer. It is imperative that that be reported immediately. You heard the commissioner outline the tragic timeline, but anybody who sees a posting on the internet or any other indication of an intention to attack the police must report it immediately. Call 911, report to a police officer, but whatever the situation, that information must get into the hands of the police immediately so we can protect the lives of our police officers and, in fact, of all of us since they protect us. There is a sadness that is very, very hard to describe, 
Commissioner Bratton has felt it many times. I have felt it many times. We met the family members. We met the parents of Officer Liu, the woman he recently married. We met the wife of Officer Ramos. We met his 13-year-old son who couldn't comprehend what had happened to his father. And with other public servants and with leaders of this police department, we prayed over the bodies of these two officers. And I ask that all New Yorkers pray for them, pray for their families. It's a moment of terrible loss, and it's a moment when we must all come together to support these families, support healing. and to be thankful that there are heroes among us like Officer Ramos and Officer Liu. I'd like to say a few words in Spanish as well. Hoy hemos perdido a dos valientes policías mientras hacían su trabajo. La ciudad está de luto. Enviamos oraciones a sus familias y a todo el cuerpo de la policía. Okay. We can take a few questions for, from you. Yes. There is no more emotional time in the life of a police officer in policing than when a death occurs. And the death of this nature, an assassination, that it's, it's unlike any other type of emotion that uh, it's hard to deal with, it's, it's hard to get your arms around. The grief that the mayor and I just uh, experienced with what the family is going through. And then I met with the, uh, the officers from the 8-4 precinct, the partner of officers, uh, the two deceased officers. It's not easy. Not easy at all. And uh, I've, I've dealt with this too many times over 44 years. You always hope that you're never going to experience it again. And the idea of a double, double tragedy that you know, here we are coming into Christmas week where we, we celebrate a birth, a birth that has changed history for 2,000 years. And instead this week now in this city, in this department, we're going to be mourning. We're going to be dealing with the death of two, two young men that fulfilled their dreams to be police officers. One officer only married uh, Officer Lou two months ago. The other officer, Officer Ramos, was a school safety officer for many years before finally fulfilling his dream to become a New York City police officer three years ago. Just had his 40th birthday on December 12th. And you, you, you try to put your mom around it, you try to make sense out of it, and you really can't. And it's uh, going to be a tough time for the men and women of this department, tough time for the New York City Police Department, and uh, but they'll go out and they'll, they'll they'll do what we expect of them, because that's what cops do, and it's not easy. There were postings uh, uh, apparently by the individual, we believe, on Instagram, the Instagram account of the, uh, uh, the woman that was wounded in Baltimore, and uh, uh, that part of our investigation will be to determine uh, what was the motivation to the best of our understanding. So those Instagram postings, which were very anti-police based on the briefing I had, 
We'll also seek to go back over time into this uh, suspect's life as to whether there were other postings, whether he had accounts of his own, this ones that we're aware of this afternoon as he was coming toward New York, that uh, those are part of multiple investigations that are now underway to try and try and make sense out of uh, what was his motivation to come to New York and murder two New York City police officers. That, that is a uh, part of what we will attempt to determine. Some of the uh, postings, which I understand that, uh, 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 that are out there, uh, would seem to indicate that uh, he had a very strong bias against police officers. And as to whether that was the principal motivation or whatever went on with him and the girlfriend this morning, which we, we will try as part of our investigation to put together what, it, what was the actual motivation. I'm sorry? His latest residence, as best we can determine it, is Georgia. But he's an individual who appears to move around. He's got a girlfriend in Baltimore. He comes to New York to murder two police officers. He does have some connectivity to Brooklyn, but I won't go into the specifics of that at this time. We're still trying to really put together uh, his movements and where he's been over these last number of days and weeks and months. Excuse me, one, 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 one at a time, please. Okay. Uh, we have no sense at this time that there's any connectivity to terrorist groups, an act of terrorism. We see nothing of that nature at this particular time. Commissioner Miller and uh, uh, his people are certainly looking at that aspect of it. That uh, Chief Boyce, Chief of Detectives, it'll be his entity that'll be leading the criminal investigation, but we're not seeing a connectivity to any organized entity at this time, but we're really trying to learn as much as we can, as quickly as we can, about this about this individual. Well, we're always concerned with that, that uh, you may recall several weeks ago after four of our young officers were attacked by the individual with the hatchet. Uh, our investigation of that clearly indicated that that was an act of terrorism that that individual had become inspired to commit that act by continual uh, uh, canvassing of websites, and particularly ICs related websites, increasingly over the last couple of weeks of his life. And we had put out notices to our offices, similar to what the federal government has been putting out about the growing concern of lone wolf types of attacks, to the extent that uh, encouraging our officers to work in pairs, increase security around our station houses. So. One of the unfortunate realities of policing is that uh, you put that blue uniform on and you become part of that thin blue line between us and anarchy. And uh, from time to time, we are victimized by it, as certainly have happened today. As to the specific motivation, hopefully we'll be able to determine that, but at the moment, that's what we're still attempting to investigate. I think this is a time to think about these families. I don't think it's a time for politics or political analysis. It's a time to think about families that just lost their father, their husband, their son, and we met those families. And what we should be thinking about now is how to support these families and how to ensure that not only our communities are safe, but our officers are safe. That's why I'm saying there is something important here, this individual this horrible assassin put information on the internet. It was a very, very brief timeline. But there may be other people posting things like this. And what we should focus on is if anybody knows of anybody who puts information like that on the internet or says it to someone, it has to be reported right away so we can protect our officers, protect, again, our entire civilization. Nothing of this nature, at least in terms of some of the postings that this uh, individual uh, uh, may have made this afternoon. 
that, let's face it, there's been, uh, not just in New York, but throughout the country, a very strong uh, anti-police, anti-criminal justice system, anti-societal set of uh, uh, initiatives underway. And uh, one of the unfortunate aspects sometimes is some people get caught up in these and, and go in, in, in directions they should not. As to whether this individual was part of any of that, part of any demonstrations here, Atlanta, where we believe his last residence, that's part of the investigation to determine what has he been doing these last several weeks and trying to put some sanity to the madness that occurred here this afternoon in the streets of Brooklyn. Actually, we can uh, give that out separately. Okay. Okay. Now, the protocols that we put in place several weeks ago and uh, looking to as much as possible continually remind our officers uh, uh, about the importance of watching out for each other, if you will. The pleas the mayor is making to the public that if they are aware of somebody whose sentiments are starting to go over the line from just talking about it to actually threatening or seeking to carry out attacks against not only police but other officials, uh, that this is that I, it's, it's, in some respects, it's like the Homeland Security Advisory. See something, say something. And it doesn't just relate to terrorism, it's, it relates to so many other issues. The tra tragedy here was that. Uh, just as the warning was coming in, the murder was occurring. And there's another irony here that we hope within a year, uh, the mayor has made available uh, a huge amount of money recently that we did several press conferences, that we hope to equip every officer in the department with a smartphone and put into every one of our vehicles tablets that would have allowed that in an incident like this where we had a photograph well, the officers would get a description, but they would not see the photograph unless they're at a roll call. We could have instantly sent out to all 35,000 of our officers, here's a picture of an individual you need to be watching for, because he has indicated he is going to attack police. Or when we're miss missing child, uh, children. Uh, so the technology uh, is coming. And here's an example of, of how it's going to benefit the safety of our officers and the public as we go forward. We have uh, uh, no information to that effect at this time, as you would appreciate. It's what we do, the investigation, the canvassing in the neighborhood, looking at the various cameras that might have been in the neighborhood, talking to people who might have been on the street, people who are in uh, the buildings adjacent to where the shooting occurred. And in that regard, that if anybody seeing these new newscasts uh, or reading about this are uh, aware that they may have information that might be of assistance to us, we certainly uh, encourage that they, they, they call us and, and give us that information, at least give us the opportunity to talk with them to see if information they might have might be helpful to us in the investigation. I've already indicated that uh, we own at this early stage the investigation see any linkage to terrorism or uh, radical groups, but that's what the investigation will hope to determine going forward as we get access if, in fact, he was somebody that had uh, uh, social media accounts. We have not uh, uh, encountered that yet as of uh, an incident occurred now about just four hours ago. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Members of media, please just hang tight. We're going to escort you back out of the hospital. I just want you to sit here for a moment. We got about our thing. We'll start bringing you guys out. Okay? So please don't leave. Wait a minute. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, make a hold, please. They don't have any evidence on it yet. Guys, make a hold, please.